<laughs> hey guys, for this video today, I want to do a rant. And the thing is, is, is that I haven't really thought, looked into this very much at all, but now that it's been brought to my attention, I really want to rant about it. And on top of what I'm going to be talking about, which I'll get into shortly, eh? Um, there is something else that I have yet to touch base on that I feel that I'm going to tackle in this video as well. So anyways, if you haven't read the title of this video already, well, which I'm sure you have, <laughs> uh, what I'm going to be talking about in this video today is I'm going to be doing a rant on how exclusive some of these Adidas jerseys are becoming in the National Hockey League these days. And I'm also going to be talking about how I'm noticing now, thanks to other people mentioning it, that away jerseys for multiple teams are getting harder and harder to find or less likely to be sold in general. So let's see. Let's start with the oldest thing first while I'm, I've got it on the top of my head or in my mind. Anyway, um, oh, excuse me. So let's talk about this. I am really starting to see that according to, and also from what other people are telling me, that uh, Adidas is starting to not sell certain away jerseys of certain teams. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear that there are teams like the San Jose Sharks and the Tampa Bay Lightning where Adidas has decided, okay, well, we're not going to have as many of these available for customers to buy, and aka fans. And personally, here's how I feel. Now, first off, I can appreciate Adidas not wanting to have as much, uh, what is, it? what's the term for it? As much of an overload of unneeded inventory. And I can appreciate Adidas not wanting to have thousands of a team's away jersey design sitting in their warehouse or from in the middle of Timbuktu or wherever their warehouses or whatever are located in for them not to sell or for them to have to put them on huge clearance discounts in order to get rid of the of old stock or existing stock. <laughs> so I kind of get where Adidas is coming from. But what I don't like is how it seems like they're starting to not offer these jerseys at all. And it's starting to look like they're now going to force fans to more and more switch over and purchase those stupid fanatics breakaway crap jerseys with those screen printed logos on them and of absolute piss poor quality in my opinion. So instead of someone being able to drop 200 US on a brand spanking new Adidas pro retail jersey, now you're going to have more trouble. Now you're going to have to likely go and buy a replica Fanatics jersey, a breakaway one. And I think that sucks. It's ridiculous. But at the same time, I get that Adidas, and, and I can appreciate that Adidas doesn't want to have a bunch of extra uh, uniforms sitting in a warehouse somewhere collecting dust, not being moved. So I get that part. So here's what I think Adidas should do. I think they should have a system where if they're not going to have as many away jerseys or certain jerseys readily available, they should have a system where if there's a bunch of fans where you could place an order for a jersey and after a few months, they'll fulfill the orders that they have and then ship them out. I mean, they could have, they could do sales on their website and they could also do sales through NHL.com, which their NHL shop is ran by fanatics as far as I know. But I don't know why. It's like, I know three months would be a hell of an inconvenience too. But at least people would know that, hey, I am going to be able to buy an Adidas made jersey. Now, as I say that, folks, 
I feel very strongly that they are grossly overpriced anyway. I mean, at least with the Reebok Edge jerseys, even though they were expensive, and usually the starting price was about 130 bucks Canadian, as far as I can remember, at least you weren't buying a jersey that tries to look like an actual authentic jersey. You knew what you were getting. And it was a, a balance. It was in the middle of an Adi Zero Pro and a Fanatics crap jersey. And it in the middle, where... You've got these mediocre screen printed shoulder patches, but at least you're not paying $200 for a jersey that looks like an authentic, that really is just an Indonesian uh, retail made replica uniform. Or as some have dubbed it, which I really like this term, replithentic. It's sold as an and marketed as an authentic, but it's just a replica with a fight strap, basically. And much better quality logos, too, by the way. I don't disagree with those who say that the Adidas retail pro jersey is of decent quality for what you get. But for the price you pay, I'm sorry, I don't like it. I don't like what Adidas has done. I mean, I would, appre I would respect Adidas a lot more if their pro jerseys did not have fight straps attached to them. So at least fans knew that when they bought an Adidas Adi Zero pro jersey, that, hey... It, it is for sure uh, an actual replica, a really good quality replica, rather than something that's made in Indonesia that's got a fight strap on it where I'm sure there's been at least one fan somewhere who thinks, oh, this is an authentic jersey. This is what the players wear. Uh, no, it's not. It's made in Indonesia. And what the players wear are jerseys made in Canada, which according to uh, jersey collectors that I've talked to, uh, the Adi Zero team issued jerseys, the ones made in Canada, are totally a total different ball game in terms of their quality and i've had a lot of people tell me that the adidas canadian made jerseys are even better quality in some people's opinions than the reebok edge team issued jerseys which i feel are of terrific quality as far as i'm concerned so that stinks you know i really don't like how even with Adidas now, with their jer making their jerseys even more expensive, you know, now they're making them harder to get. I, and as I say, I think that at at the minimum, they should allow fans to place orders for an Adidas jersey and say, "Hey, uh, we don't fulfill our orders for an extended for like eight weeks or something." And then once they have enough, have eight weeks of orders placed in, they can have those jerseys made in Indonesia where they're made and then have them shipped out to here in Canada where I live or the United States or Europe or wherever they're going and ship them by the thousands and know that they're actually going to people rather than going to sit in a warehouse and collect dust until they have to be put on a clearance discount in order to get rid of old stock. So that part, I think, is understandable. But I don't like how, in some cases, they're supposedly not even making them. Like the Sharks Away jersey. I mean, is the Sharks Away jersey they have right now any good? No, it's mediocre. And so is their home jersey, as far as I'm concerned, and even their new third jersey. In my opinion, even though I love the Stealth logos. I do. I just don't like the ultra-simplistic dark on dark jersey where you can't even see the designs on the on the arms what's the point but you know the thing is is you know i just don't think it's right that adidas is not even supposedly making some of these pro jerseys they should at least have like an eight week period where they wait for orders and then make the orders as they need them that's what i think they should do i mean if a person wants to buy an adidas made jersey why not? At least give the fans an opportunity to purchase it. I think a lot of fans would be happy to wait rather than spend money on those screen-printed Fanatics jerseys. I mean, I know I'd... If I were just drooling out the mouth for, say, uh, a Vegas Golden Knights away jersey, which truth is I still don't have a Golden Knights jersey, and I've been thinking about at some point getting one because, I mean, it'd be... Part of me thinks it'd be really cool to have a jersey from every NHL team, which truth is I don't. But, you know, 
If I wanted, for example, a brand new Golden Knights away jersey and Adidas made one rather than those mediocre, or at least I think they're mediocre, those Fanatics jerseys, you know, I'd be happy to wait eight weeks if that meant that I'd be able to get an Adidas jersey rather than a Fanatics one. But I mean, for me personally, I'm not going to, I don't want to pay full price for the Adidas ones. I mean, the, the two Adidas jerseys that I own, I certainly, I spent about the cost of one brand new one for both, to be honest. But, you know, I really don't care for that. And I think that's kind of a, a jerk move on their part, in my opinion. But now, here's another thing. I'm hearing now, on top of that, that supposedly they're making some jerseys harder and more exclusive and harder to find and purchase. For example, I hear that to buy the Carolina Hurricanes new away jersey, you have to buy it through, like, I think their team shop or something in Carolina. And if you want a new one, the only ones readily available are those Fanatics jerseys. Uh, if I were a Hurricanes fan and I wanted an away jersey, a brand new one, which overall, I actually think the design of it is not that bad, even though I don't like the red word mark on, and, and the heavy, the red heavy design they went with. I think the word mark should have been black. And I also don't like how their third jersey logo is the only logo on the shoulders. And that new inverted logo on their helmets is ugly. Yikes. But, you know, I just... So to buy that one, I've heard that you'd have... To, you really... It's... And I hope that this is not the case. But I've heard that you can either only get an Adidas one through their team shop. Or you have to buy a Fanatics one. I've also heard that with the newly unveiled Winter Classic uniforms for the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars. That to buy them, you have to go through their team stores. And they've only got like a limited supply or something. I'm sorry. That pisses me off. So basically from what. This is how I see it. I would not be surprised if what they're trying to do. And sorry if I sound like a conspiracy theorist. But what it looks like to me is that they're lowering the supply. So that with the increased demand that they have right now they can up the price as far that's how I see it and I hopefully I'm wrong but that's how I see it looks to me like it's a cash grab and that kind of that really pisses me off I mean to be honest I understand that Nashville's uh, winter classic jersey is rather boring because it's got a, a two-word script on the front instead of an actual logo but I think it's a very faithful tribute to the Dixie Flyers that were a minor hockey team that played in Tennessee during the early 1960s. I really respect Nashville for honoring the hockey history in Tennessee. And I didn't even know that there was a team that played in Tennessee, an ice hockey team that even played in Tennessee back in the 60s. I thought maybe at the, at the earliest, maybe the 1980s, maybe they had a minor team in the 80s or something, not the 60s. I was really quite surprised I didn't even know that the Dixie Flyers were a thing. And they did exist. That's actually really cool in my opinion. And Dallas, I mean, when I learned that they have had hockey history that goes back decades. Honestly, I that was something I wasn't expecting. I thought that Dallas started having hockey arenas and hockey teams once the Dallas Stars moved from Minnesota. Goes to show how much I've, I've really, really knew about some of these cities hockey histories in the southern United States. You know, I actually feel kind of stupid because, you know, I I never thought that there was a hockey team that played in Nashville in the, or in Dixie, Tennessee. I think that's where they played, hence the name. But I didn't know there was a team that played in Tennessee in the 1960s. And I didn't know there was a, a, a team in Dallas called the Dallas Texans. That's really cool. I mean, I've always felt that the uh, Predators Stars Winter Classic matchup was a really weird choice, but I must say, I mean, at first I was very skeptical. 
but I've done a total 180 since. I think this is actually really, really cool that both of these cities not only get to participate in an outdoor game for a change, but also they actually get to, uh, they actually have decades of hockey history to throw back to. That's awesome. But you know, for example, the Dallas Stars winter classic jersey, I actually think it's quite nice. It's not my favorite jersey, but I must say I love the logo and I love the unique design and I love the green. It's beautiful. But you know, do I want to spend like say $200 US on a brand new one? No, I don't, to be honest. And not only that, I certainly am not getting a Fanatics Winter Classic jersey. I don't give a damn how good anybody thinks the quality of those things are. I think they're terrible. I'm not going to be spending money on a Fanatics jersey. If somebody gives me a Fanatics jersey, that's one thing. But I am certainly not buying one. Not even for 20 bucks. Serious. It's the quality of those jerseys is terrible, in my opinion. It shouldn't even exist, in my opinion. But you know, hearing that the Predators and the Stars Winter Classic sweaters are going to be mostly exclusive to their team stores or wherever you buy them. I'm sorry, I have a real problem with that. They should be readily available. I mean, I'll be honest. I actually would like to at some point purchase a Dallas Stars Winter Classic jersey. I I feel that the Stars did a very good job with it. Now, would I want them to make that their main jersey full-time? No. But as for that logo, hell, hell yeah. It's, very, it's way superior over their current logo that they've gone to in the past five years. Way better. I love it. I love the simplicity of their jersey, and it should at least be a full-time third jersey. I'd love to see home and away jerseys with that logo on the front. I think that would be wonderful. But, you know, I gotta say, I, I really am pissed off if this is true. And now, they're if they're making people either pay even more money for Adidas jerseys or forcing them to buy Fanatics jerseys, I'm sorry, folks. That type of thing pisses me off. I don't like that whatsoever. And I don't think anybody should like it, as far as I'm concerned. But this is ridiculous. So now they're lowering the supply from what I'm seeing... And as there becomes more and more demand, they up the price. That's really something that ruffles my feathers. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And I think everybody should be pissed. Fanatics jerseys are terrible quality, as far as I'm concerned. It's a shame that people are having to purchase Fanatics jerseys if they want a certain team's jersey. I don't care. I'm not spending good money on a Fanatics jersey. And I'm certainly not going to be spending an arm and a leg on an Adidas Adi Zero Pro retail jersey either. I'm sorry, but I just wanted to do a rant on this stuff. This really pisses me off. You know, for certain teams away jerseys, I don't give a damn if less people want them then don't make as many right away. Make them as demand comes in. You know? Have people order it through NHL.com or whatever, or the Adidas websites here in Canada and the United States, or NHL Shop International. And then Adidas can fulfill those orders as they come in by the tens of thousands. If they're so worried about away jerseys not selling as much. But at least make them available. And as for the Winter Classic sweaters, you better damn well make them available. I think both teams did a really good job with their sweaters. And I don't care what anybody says. I think Nashville's jersey was a wonderful tribute to the Dixie Flyers. It's I agree. It's not the greatest design ever. But you know what? It's To me, it's not about it being the greatest design ever. I really respect the Predators for how they're paying homage to the hockey history of the city of Nashville and Tennessee as a state. I respect that. And the Dallas Stars, I mean, their their Texans faux back design is 
a design that for the winter classic, I think they did a great job as well. I'm not a fan of the cream pants where and the leather style gloves. I think the pants should have been white, but besides that, that uniform's gonna look really nice. I, I can't wait for the Winter Classic in January. It's gonna be a good looking matchup. It's not gonna be as good as last last year's in my opinion, but let me tell you, it's definitely gonna look a zillion times better than those hideous stadium series uniforms we got last year. Even though I would be the first to tell you that I thought Pittsburgh's was actually not that bad. But Philadelphia's ruined it, ruined both uniforms for me. Worst jersey in NHL history, in my opinion, was the Flyers Stadium Series last year. I would rather see the Montreal Canadiens bring their barber pole throwbacks from 10 years ago as a full-time third jersey than have the Flyers ever wear that uniform again. I'm not, I'm not saying that to catch your attention. I'm saying that because I damn well mean it. For Christ's sake, what the hell? And now Adidas. Oh, well, you know, uh, these jerseys are only going to be exclusive through these pro shops or whatever. No, make them available everywhere. People are going to want them. And if you're worried about not selling enough of them, make them to order. Once you have X amount of jerseys pre-sold, then make your shipments. At least... I, I, I would like to believe that Adidas would be able to do that. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm just saying, it's like that would be better than them not making them at all or making them like stupidly unavailable, which, you know, with Christmas coming up, I'm sure that the Winter Classic jerseys are going to be available. It's just, I just don't like this stuff according to what I've been gathering. And I hopefully I'm wrong on this. I hope. But my goodness, people should not have to buy Fanatics jerseys. And you know, I that just really grinds my gears, so to speak. You know, it's ridiculous. It is really ridiculous. And by the way, I owe you guys an apology. I never put any visuals in this video. I should have said that at the beginning like I am like I said I'd start doing. Well, guys, I didn't, and I am sorry. And by the way, I will put that in the description of this video. I will. So at least I will get something right, where at least there is a chance for somebody to be warned that Roxilla is just sitting here in his car doing this video without any visuals and just talking. But anyways... I would love to hear what people think about this topic. And if there's anything I'm incorrect on, by all means, correct me. Seriously. I I actually am somebody who doesn't mind being wrong sometimes. You know, I find that when I do these videos, I've learned more about jerseys and teams than I, than I did before I had a channel. I find I learn a lot from people I talk to on you here on YouTube. It's great. It's actually really great. And, you know, I must say, I just hope that this whole Winter Classic exclusivity situation is not as bad as it's from what I've heard. And I really do hope that that Hurricanes away jersey is not going to be so damn exclusive that you have to be stuck with a Fanatics one. That's not right. So I hope I'm wrong. But I must say... My initial thoughts on this subject matter is, Adidas, you guys are being jerks in my opinion. Forget the Carolina Hurricanes being a bunch of jerks. I mean, if you guys are making it that hard to get an Adidas made jersey for anybody who wants one, maybe you guys are the jerks as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, I will say this though, Adidas... You guys did a good job with the Winter Classic uniforms this year. So at least you got something right as far as I'm concerned. All right, folks. On that note, I'm going to call it a wrap on this video. And Adidas, I hope that you will start to get it together. Fix your, fix your jerseys. Fix the Addy Zero uniform. Give us proper-looking collars again. And... Don't make your jerseys unavailable. 
or overly expensive either. And for the love of God, please don't force us hockey fans to have to be stuck with those stupid Fanatics jerseys either. All right, guys, I've talked for 25 minutes. That's a wrap for me. I hope that if you've stuck around, you've enjoyed this video. If you got anything to add or anything to correct me on, by all means, I'd love to hear it. All right, guys, take care. And of course, as always, folks, bye for now.